prepare a lot of solutions, but I very rarely weigh out solids. Instead, I save myself a lot of struggle and start with stock solutions. These are highly concentrated solutions, typically of things we use a lot, things like salts and pH buffers that we can then dilute down to various working concentrations, the concentrations we actually want to use them at. Because we start with a just concentrated solution, there will also be plenty of room that we can mix them with other stock solutions and make more complicated solutions. So say, for example, I wanted to make a buffer that was 10 millimolar Tris pH 8 and 250 millimolar, 100 millimolar NaCl, and I wanted 250 mils of this. Now I could go and I could weigh out the amounts that I would need of each of these based on their molecular weight, and then stand by the pH meter for, for an hour trying to get the pH to exactly where I want it. Or what I could do is I could just start from a one molar Tris solution that thought was already pH at pH 8, and a five molar NaCl solution, just calculate how much I need to dilute each of those, mix them together, and voila, I've got my solution much, much faster. And I still have tons and tons of that stock solution left over that I can use it to make a bunch of other solutions. And I can use it to make all sorts of different solutions with different concentrations as long as they're below the stock concentration. So making stock solutions is super duper handy. And it's kind of, I feel like it's really underappreciated. Um, so one of the first things I recommend everybody do when they join a lab is to stock up on stock solutions. So some common ones um, I've listed, basically you have pH buffers. So these include things like trysts and teeps and um, sodium phosphate buffers, potassium phosphate buffers. Basically, you want to look and see the protocols, um, what protocols, like what final working solutions do you need? And then what stock solutions would you need in order to make those working solutions? And then you make those stock solutions. Um, and then every time you want to make that working solution, you just start from those stock solutions. So you're going to have to look and see what pH to make those stock buffers at. And you might say have a Tris solution at pH 8 and a Tris solution at pH um, 7.5 and that sort of thing. So you're going to have like multiple solutions and that's totally cool, but then you don't have to pH them every time you go and you make a buffer because you just start from the pH that you want. But to know what you want, you're going to have to know what those final things you want are. Some things that you're probably like almost definitely going to need are sodium chloride, so a five molar um, solution is pretty common, as well as potassium chloride. We typically make like a three mil molar um, solution of potassium chloride. For the buffers, we typically make them at one molar, which is really convenient for your calculations. Um, also things like imidazole, one molar imidazole, one molar DTT. Um, you might have something like a 0.5 molar EDTA, various things like this. Um, and so this is just a list of some common ones, but you're going to want to look and see what final concentrations you're going to need of various things in the buffers that you're going to need to make. And then over time, you'll keep adding to your stock of stock solutions. So some of the benefits of stock solutions, well, we've talked about how they can save you time, but they also can make your solution making more accurate. Say, for example, instead of making like 250 mils of that buffer, I only wanted to make 25 mils. Well, now I'd be weighing out a super duper tiny amount. And because the super duper tiny amount, if I'm off by a little bit, like if one of those little drops of, or um, not drops, but one of those little like crystals of Tris or whatever is left on, left in the way boat, well, that's going to be a much, it's like a, drop in a teaspoon as opposed to if I were doing it from a stock solution, where if it's off by a little bit, um, it's diluted out and so the effects aren't going to be as drastic. Um, and so avoiding having to weigh out those small little volumes is another benefit of having these stock solutions. In terms of the benefits versus storing just a bunch of working solutions is one, it's going to save you space on your shelf um, rather than having a bunch of different solutions. It's also going to be more stable when you have these high concentration solutions. They're going to be harder for microbes to grow in. Um, and so, I mean, like, would you want to be growing in five molar sodium chloride? Um, I want it. But basically, um, we could also like filter these solutions and then keep them at room temp for a long time. Whereas if we make these um, final working solutions, we often have to keep them in the fridge and be more careful about things potentially growing in them. So stock solutions are going to be helpful in that way as well. 
Now we talked about when you go to make lock solutions, you wanna start and look at what sort of like working solutions you're gonna need. If you know what working solutions you're gonna need and then you're going to try to figure out what stock solutions to make, I recommend just like Googling it, seeing what people normally make, what are common concentrations people use. You might be, be like, oh, I'll just make one molar of everything, but that might be above the solubility limit. So you don't wanna go try to make one molar because it's not gonna work out. Additionally, you're going to want to see if there are any special things that you need to know. Like for EDTA, for example, you have to pH adjust it um, or else it's not going to dissolve. Um, and you might learn this the hard way, but if you had Googled it beforehand, you could find that out. You also want to know, do you need to filter it? Do you need to autoclave it? Do you need to store it at minus 20? Um, should you make aliquots? Do you need to hide it from light? Do you have to like protect it with foil? So all these various things you can typically find just when you like Google recipes for it. But you should also know how to actually calculate how much you're going to need. So calculations based on molecular weights, um, because initially you are going to have to weigh out some stuff to make that stock solution, but then hopefully that stock solution will last you a really long time. And so I have um, more examples. I have a bunch of examples, some practice problems, um, videos explaining how to do various calculations. And so I'll link you to those if you want to know more about those, um, as well as then trying to figure out the dilution calculations because you're still gonna have to do some calculations, but here you're just diluting things. You're not like actually weighing things out each time. You don't even have to know the molecular weight. As long as you know the concentrations, you can just use your handy dandy C1, V1 equals C2, V2, um, the initial concentration times the initial volume equals the final concentration times the final volume. Um, and this is going to make things a lot easier to calculate. And I have posts on that as well that I will link to. So hope this helps. Um, remember whenever possible to start with those stock solutions, it's gonna make your life a lot simpler um, and also be more accurate and more stable and all this various cool stuff. And so I find that they're kind of undervalued. And I remember when I first joined a lab, I didn't realize you can make these stock solutions. And so I was weighing things out and pHing them every time. And then making buffers was this huge ordeal. But then once I start from stock solutions, it's way, way easier. So I just wanted to pass along the advice. Um, so start with those stock solutions and hope this helps.